I am a firm believer in true love and my case for today's video is before you fall head over heels or madly in love with someone, these are the things for you to consider and know. Even if you are dating or married, I believe that this can help you spice up your relationship to get to have a healthy relationship. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, do so and hit the subscribe button and let's get it going. Point number one. Before you fall head over heels, know yourself. You need to do some soul searching and introspective work to know who you are as a person, your weaknesses, your strengths. Why do you need a relationship? Why do you want to be loved or why do you want to love? Are you trying to run away from being alone or from feeling lonely? Or are you trying to escape something, maybe a heart or heartbreak? What is the reason? Because if you make the mistake of trying to escape a heartbreak by jumping into a relationship to find love, you will only end up bleeding on someone who did not cut you. You only end up not being you because at this point you are desperate for something so you are not going as yourself. You are presenting yourself to receive love and that is not a place to find healthy love because you are now in a place to be a parasite, sorry to say so, as if you only want to suck out of someone the love you never got from where you came from or try to suck love to use it as a coping mechanism to manage your heart. And that is not the best place to be. Knowing yourself should tell you, where am I in this moment? Do I really need a relationship in my life? It's about asking yourself, the questions that are important to know if relationship is the solution for your case at the moment. The truth is, once you do not know who you are, you settle for anything. You settle for less. You settle for anyone. You will not know what you want in a relationship, how you should be treated, and who you should step into a relationship with. Because at this point, anybody that brings anything that looks like love, you receive it without knowing if it is the kind of love you deserve. And there are so many people who out of a place of brokenness and weakness, they jump into a relationship because they are looking for love and if they see a likeness of something that just looks like this is love, they receive it. And that is why it does not last. That is why we have a lot of broken people in relationships because they do not even know that they did not need that relationship. They needed to be by themselves and know themselves and love themselves before they would ever make a step to fall head over heels with someone. And this is the important thing about knowing yourself and who you are. By the time you know yourself and who you are, you end up valuing yourself and having a standard such that you weed out some people from coming into your life. Maybe as a woman, if you were desperate before, you come to build yourself and have value and have standard, you would have boundaries for your life such that anyone that would come into your life would meet you with boundaries. And they would know that this is the kind of woman you are. These are the things you would want and would not want. And you that would not be on pride, but it would be on knowing yourself and being yourself. And anyone that would come, you would have the possibility of weeding out some set of men from coming into your life because by the time they come and see who you are, some of them would even know that they don't deserve you. Some will be intimidated by you. Same thing with a man. You will not pick low once you know who you are. Some men have the problem of trying to pick low because they feel like they don't want to be disgraced or shamed by going to a higher or a high value woman who would reject them. And we fear rejection. So because of that, most men do not go to someone who would reject them. And that is why in the other case, some men chase after a woman and want to get that woman at all costs. Why? Because they don't want to feel that rejection. But you have to know yourself. Once you know yourself, you go for who fits you. Scriptures in Matthew 7 says, Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. And what is this saying? By the time you see people make relationship mistakes by picking low or picking people who are not supposed to be with them or not knowing how they should be handled or treated by someone, it's because they do not know themselves. Their actions proves who they are. By their fruit, you shall know them. Number two, 
before you fall head over heels, heal. I would love to say that love is a battlefield and relationship is hard work. And a wounded person would not be able to participate in the battle, not in a bad sense, but in a good sense that love requires. Because love requires mutual energy exchange between two people who know what they are doing in that context. Relationship requires that. And you don't need someone who is coming, you know, as a weak link. You don't need a weak link in that relationship because it will not be able to stand the test of time. It can be lengthened, but it will not be healthy. It might become toxic. And the possibility of a wounded person in a relationship doing well would only get themselves more wounded or end up hurting the other person. Just like it's widely said that hurting people hurt people. So if you're already hurt, the possibility of hurting the person you get into relationship with is 100%. You won't be able to do the necessary work to get the relationship moving at the pace it should move at. A scripture in Matthew says, when Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. And this is where I come to the point that most people that go into relationships and have toxic relationships do not know that they are sick. There are so many people in relationships today who do not know that they are sick, they have been traumatized, they have been wounded, they have been hurt. But then they do not admit that they are in such places. Their experiences have marred their perception. Their experiences of brother, boyfriend or girlfriend or marriages, ex, have marred their perception of what they want out of love, what they want out of a relationship. That is why whenever they approach a relationship, they approach it with the wrong lens. Because they are not healed. These people actually need healing. They don't need a relationship. Just like Jesus said in that passage that a healthy person would rarely need a doctor. Even though they still go for checkup, but it's the sick person that really needs a doctor. So in your relationship, if you are in one or if you want to get into a relationship before you fall head over heels, please heal. Your healing is your personal journey. Your healing is necessary for you. Your healing is the most important thing you can do for yourself. You don't need to have the frame of reference from your past and your hearts regarding your relationship such that every little thing is triggering you. You have to get healed such that when you approach a relationship, you approach it with a clear lens. And once you approach a relationship with a clear lens, it means you are choosing right already. But a person that is not healed cannot even choose right because they don't know themselves. They don't even know who they are. So a quick story, I found myself in a relationship for five years and when I quit that relationship, honestly, the thought of rushing into another relationship to heal from the heartbreak was really there. I know we are in a generation and time that some men don't want to tell that they are heartbroken. And most men out of a place of heartbreak try to get to play games with other people. They rush into a relationship trying to force themselves on someone trying to get love because they have been heartbroken. And when I was heartbroken, I felt the need to rush into another relationship. And it was as if the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart that I don't need it. And I thought about it because I believe in God, I believe in the Holy Spirit, and I believe in Him leading me. Then I realized that if I get into a relationship with someone, it will not work. Or I will end up pouring out my bitterness on this person. I will end up hurting this person and that's not my heart. That's not what I want. So I should not use this person as my distraction to try to get off my past hurt or heartbreak. It wasn't proper. So I paused and waited for five years and those period of time, I learned, I studied, I went on YouTube, watched a lot of relationship content, every relationship content I could find. I was feeding myself with it transforming my mind and shaping myself. And when I came out, right now I can say I'm a better person than who I used to be. Because I didn't mean I went into marriage at that time, I don't know if I would have been a better man or a better husband. I would not be. I didn't mean I had a relationship when I fell out of one, I quit the relationship I was in and I was heartbroken. I would not have a better relationship continuing. But now that I'm healed, my relationship is flourishing and I can attest to the fact that I'm grown and I'm growing and my relationship is a place of growth for me, not a place 
for me to medicate my pain. So most relationships that are broken today is because people are using it as a bed to medicate the pain they are feeling from the hurt they experience. So before you fall head over heels, heal. Number three, before you fall head over heels, assess compatibility. The truth is you would not even know who you are compatible with if you were not healed. But once you come from a healed place, you can now assess compatibility by asking yourself, am I compatible with this person? Do our values match? Do I even like this person's character? Is this person intelligent? Okay, for someone like me that I love intelligent women, because there's something that happens when I meet an intelligent woman and they speak intelligence and they speak wisdom, I can see this person as a purpose partner. That is compatibility for me. I don't know for you, but I know most people when they think about compatibility, the first thought that comes to mind is physical compatibility. And what is this physical compatibility? It is just the thought of attraction and chemistry. And the truth is, for me, from my point of view, I would say you would not naturally meet someone whom you are not attracted to. So already, it is the attraction that drew you to the person that captured your eyes. And once the attraction has captured your eyes and you get close to this person and talk with them and get to know them better, assess other compatibility components for you to build a good relationship. It is not just about the chemistry and, and the attraction. There's so much more to it, to compatibility, than chemistry and attraction. The intelligence, the emotional intelligence, every other thing that you need in a relationship, the value system that they have, do they match yours? Your character, are you okay with it? Can you manage that? The few things that you get to know about them, are you okay with it? Or are they something that you can talk around? Are they teachable? And when we talk about value system matching, it is not... As a result of maybe as a Christian, you say, oh, they are Christians, they go to church, they speak in tongues. My dear, please be careful. The fact that they go to church and speak in tongues, we have a lot of pretense in church today. And we have a lot of people who have positions, even in churches, who are not really God's children. So you don't have to be deceived in this area when it comes to relationship with the speaking in tongues and all the theatrics of religiosity because it can be used to deceive and then you don't have to be amongst those that are deceived the bible says that two can work together unless they agree so also it talks about being unequally yoked and when i think about unequally yoked it is goes beyond being a christian or go to the same church or same denomination it goes beyond that to talk about compatibility when you talk with this person what is their view of god what is their view of spirituality what is their view about their faith how is their faith what do they believe about God? Do you guys share the same value system? You can see someone and think they are who you think they are. But it will take communication and time for you to discover if you are compatible in truth with this person. Some people pretend. And they can really pretend and go along with you wherever you want them to go. They can follow you. But true compatibility will, will take you to communicate deeply, be vulnerable, be honest, checkmate if you are talking real. Because there are some people who are just talking shallow things, shallow. They don't really talk deep and dig into who they are. So this is where you have to know, are we compatible? Can we talk? Scripture says, guard your heart with all due diligence because the issues of life comes from this heart. So you have to be careful. Number four, before you fall head over heels, evaluate shared values. Because love alone is not enough you have to know that love is not enough to have a good relationship falling head over heels is not enough to have a good relationship you can really show someone love and realize that you people do not have shared values your purpose do not align your mindset about family values do not align there are so many things you need to check my and that is the point you need to ask yourself are we on the same page family values financial values lifestyle choices dreams purpose location everything that needs to be talked about concerning your future because you shouldn't just be in a relationship without thinking about the future the long term if this thing gets to work if you get to be with each other and learn more about each other where are we going to with this where is this taking us and it's the place for you to ask yourself can we grow together once the thrill gets low do we fall out of love or Will we have a way of communication that we can spark up the love? So you have to check, make your shared values and communication 
and proper way of resolving conflicts and disagreements can help you. I have a video about how to handle conflict and disagreement on your mindset about that that I will post up here. You can check the link above to check that out. Number five, before you fall head over heels, count the cost of loving. The truth is that love does not have a price tag and if it were to have a price tag, we will tag it sacrifice because it takes a lot for you to be able to love truly. Real love will take a lot from you, but love does not have a price. Money cannot buy love. And I would also say that love is not a merchandise to be bought or to be sold. Sometimes some people feel like some men in particular feel like they can use their money to buy love. But the truth is that they do not buy love. They end up using their hard-earned money to buy women who pretend to love them, who only love their money. And those women will hang around them and roll with them because they still have the money and eat their money. They can even get married to such women and keep them at home and they will keep rolling together because the money is there. But the heart of that woman is not with that man because love cannot be bought with that money that is spent. Scripture says in Songs of Solomon, Many waters cannot quench love, nor can rivers drown it. If a man tried to buy love with all his wealth, his offer would be utterly scorned. And this is a place for you to know that love alone is not enough, but you have to know the count the cost of loving. Jesus said, if who of you who wants to build a house, first of all, do not stay to count the cost. What will it cost me? Because I don't want to be ashamed in this journey. And when you want to think about it, before you fall head over heels in love, you have to know that love will cost you your selfishness, to cost you your pride, your ego, whoever you are as a man or as a woman, as a lady, it will cost you your impatience. It will cost you everything in your flesh that is beyond money. It will cost you to let go so much, to compromise and have healthy alignments because you need to align with the person that you get to love. And these are the things you have to get to wrap your mind around to know that you need to consider it. Are you ready to let go your pride to love? Because you can't hold on to pride and be humble to accept the love your partner is giving to you with their weakness, with their weak self. We are all imperfect humans and none of us is perfect because none of us is perfect. We cannot really bring perfection totally, but we, we are a work in progress. Are you humble enough to accept the progress of the journey that your partner and you are taking such that sometimes when they bring their weaknesses, you can support them in your strength and trust their strength and allow them to operate in their strength. Are you ready to accept this compromise? Are you ready to cooperate together? If you're not ready, then you have to know that you're not ready to count the cost of loving. And what I would say is that the greatest gift you can give your partner in your relationship is the gift of your patience. And that should be a mutual thing. Both of you have to exchange the gift of your patience to each other, I extend my patience to my partner and expect the same when I'm not in my good place. And with patience comes kindness, with that comes selflessness and every other thing you want to name about love. Number six, before you fall head over heels, don't rush. There's always this thing about love that people want to rush and they want to run with it. But the truth is, making haste is an act of foolishness in this realm and context of loving. You can't just make haste in a relationship and before you know you hear somebody say, let's go with the flow. Which flow, my brother or sister? How do you just go with a flow you do not know? So before you speed off, try to sit down and adjust and reminisce. What am I going to let go to let this relationship work? And am I not going to miss those things because there are some friendships you cut out of your life or that will naturally be spaced because of what you are in love with someone. And you have to think about this. Don't rush love. Because by the time you rush, you make a costly mistake that will affect you in the future and you end up feeling like, ah, this person actually used you or they didn't give you time. They Before you go into all those things that will lead you to argument and conflict, sit down and take it slowly. So you need to allow the pace of growth to take its own stand in your relationship so that you will not make hazardous mistakes that will affect both of your lives when you get to be in love. It's true that most times when people get to love, they put their best foot forward towards the person that they love. And you have to know this, that when you don't rush, you can actually take time to build the foundation of trust, honesty, 
openness, vulnerability, transparency, and everything that you need, authenticity. These are the foundations you need to build with time. And when you don't rush, you take time to analyze all of this. Be vulnerable with, with each other. Sit down with your partner and tell them stories about you for them to actually get to know who you are, to see your heart, to see what you've been through, and for them to be able to empathize, you have to share. And you also empathize with your partner, but if you rush, you enjoy the thrill and the outings and forget that the relationship is not being built. You're just hanging out together. So I hope that these points are helpful, that before you fall head over heels in love, madly in love with someone, or if you're in a relationship already, you can now adjust and know how to arrange yourself to get to have a better relationship. If you are married, you can also apply some of these thoughts in your marriage to make it healthy. I hope this helps. I hope this is beneficial. Let me know in the comment section which part of this video really makes sense to you. Bye-bye.